This is a video example of microfracture of a symptomatic defect of the glenoid. Preoperative evaluation should include radiographs to eliminate osteoarthritis. In addition, MRI can help to identify symptomatic defects of the glenoid or the humerus. Care must be taken to appropriately indicate patients to assure that they have no other obvious sources of pain as cartilage defects of the glenohumeral joint are generally very well tolerated. The technique proceeds arthroscopically after a full diagnostic arthroscopy is performed. The technique is identical to that performed in the knee for a symptomatic cartilage defect where microfracture is also appropriately indicated. The technique is performed using a curette to violate the calcified layer. One of the primary goals is to create a vertical wall of the surrounding articular cartilage. An arthroscopic basket or the curette and even a shaver can be used to achieve this. Basic science data has suggested that violating the calcified layer will assure a greater degree of fibrocartilage fill as well as the degree of maturation. Combining a shaver, curette, and a basket, one can create vertical walls, enhancing the transition zone between abnormal and normal, and to achieve precise preparation of the subcartal bed just beneath the calcified layer. Once the surgeon is assured that the calcified layer is violated, a microfracture awl is utilized and introduced to the anterior superior portal. In this particular area of the glenoid, along the anterior inferior edge, the anterior superior portal can be utilized, reaching virtually every aspect of the defect. Defects in other locations might require satellite portal placement, including use of a posterior portal while viewing from anterior. Once the defect is prepared with the shaver, arthroscopic burr, or basket, a microfracture awl is introduced, making sure that the tip of the microfracture awl is introduced normal or perpendicular to the surface. Typically, microfracture proceeds by placing several perforations spaced about 2 to 3 millimeters apart, beginning in the periphery. Great care is taken not to create confluent holes between one microfracture perforation and another. After the periphery is microfractured, the central aspect of the defect is prepared in a similar fashion. Again, great care is utilized to enter normal or perpendicular to the surface to create access to the subcondyl bleeding surfaces without creating confluence of the microfracture holes. Once the microfracture is completed, a shaver is introduced to eliminate any bony debris or further fragmentation of the articular cartilage. The surgeon can reduce the pump pressure or utilize negative suction through the shaver in an effort to create bleeding into the area to assure that all the holes fill with blood emanating from the subcondyl plate. Postoperative care is similar to the knee, except patients do not have protection in terms of loading of the shoulder other than minimizing activation of the concavity compression mechanism. We do not use, utilize continuous passive motion, but rather encourage patients to perform pendulum exercises at 800 to 1200 cycles a day. Return to activities and sports generally is delayed for approximately four to six months when the defect itself is felt to be the primary source of the patient's pain and impairment.